Hey everyone, I'm Glenn, I'm the registrar here at the National Army Museum. Um, welcome to sunny Waiuru. Glad you made trip down. Um, so what uh, we're going to do, I'll, I'll show you a few objects we have in the... They were honoured to have in the collection from Kuti Okina and John Dendia. Um, and once you've had a look in there, um, I'll grab our Herald Jeep curator, Elizabeth Milburn, and take you down into the museum and show you some of the objects that we have on display there as well. Um, if I can just ask that you don't touch anything, any of the objects in here. Um, if you need any assistance, just, just ask me and I can, I can help you with that. Um, there is a, a photocopy version of the diary, which you're happy to look through and find through, find that's fine, but please don't touch the, the original one. Um, yeah, if any questions, just uh, feel free to ask. So before we go through and have a look at all um, of the bits and bobs, we've got a few things we'd like to go through. First of all, I'm going to ask Logan um, to read a letter that has come from the Slovenian ambassador. Wow. Uh, I won't have to read his name. No. So, dear Mrs. Peterson, I was very glad to learn about the relaunch of the book Partisan, uh, telling the story of Mr. John Denver, your grandfather, who courageously fought with our resistance during World War II. His willingness to join the fight of our people and its struggle for survival deserves the highest admiration. This chapter of our national history is especially important to us because of the goal of the German Nazis an Italian fascist was to destroy the Slovenian people as an ethnic group. The act of such a noble and brave man must not be forgotten. Not only as part of history, but also as a guidance to all decent people to stand against the forces and political ideas trying to destroy the very essence of humanity and human civilization. In order to keep the memory of your grandfather and his heroic acts alive, it was a must to mention him in my speech during the ceremony of presenting my letter of credence to the Governor of General, Governor General of New Zealand, the Right Honourable Dame Patsy Redding. Redding. Mr. Denver represents an everlasting bond between the peoples of Slovenia and New Zealand. I hope that during one of my future visits, to your beautiful country, I will be able to visit the National Army Museum and to meet you or someone from your family. Kind regards. Wow. So there's just a couple of things that um, I'd like to say if I can, and it's um, thank you and welcome to everyone. I think it's just amazing to see all of these familiar faces in one place at one time. It's a, a rare and special event, and um, it's great to see you all here. Um, a huge thank you to Harper Collins um, for their interest in and republication of the book. Was, that was unexpected and came out of the blue. I was very happy to get that phone call from Gary. Thanks. Um, also to the Wairu Army Museum for hosting us today and your good stewardship of the artifacts that um, you have here of Brandad's. Uh, to Mike, to Gary and to Denver for the research and support um, over the years. It's kind of been ongoing and fits and farts and yeah, and here we are today. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to go over too much of the history. It's all there and it's really well documented in, in the book and in a lot of newspaper articles. Um, in his prisoner of war diary that's held here in the museum, a notebook of jottings that um, I'm lucky enough to have in my possession and try and read occasionally, as well as a couple of, if you're not aware, a couple of short video um, clips, one in newsreel footage of him receiving medals in Yugoslavia and one in his subsequent visit in the 60s um, going through some old battlegrounds. His history is unique in its way and although there are many others who have their own story. This one, however, belongs to our family. And I, for one, am very proud to call him my grandfather. Um, I'm not going to go through all of his history, but I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I believe were important to him. And that's the sacrifice of both the Greek and the Yugoslav people who helped prisoner of wars, prisoner of um, 
POWs and escapers, especially those who helped on the second escape. The punishment for helping escaped prisoners was severe, really severe. Grandad re-met some of these people when he went back to Yugoslavia, which I think is really cool. His partisan friends meant a great deal to him, and I don't think we can underestimate the tenacity and bravery of an Australian and a New Zealand soldier who joined and fought with a guerrilla force in a country occupied by the enemy where they did not speak the language and who were operating under the harshest of conditions. These are men who conducted themselves bravely and are something that we should not forget. This brings me to Colin Cargill, the young Australian gunner who escaped with Granddad in December 1941. They joined and fought with Tarzans together for a year before Colin was captured and shot. These were men thrown together in conditions that forged the closest friendships and comradeship. And Granddad took his death very hard and he never forgot him. He um, writes of him, he's, the book is dedicated to him. He writes of him in the notebook after the war and reading from a uh, passage in that, this notebook. It was then that catastrophe struck. My friend Colin Cargill was killed. He was trapped in an ambush. To have lost my companion was heartbreaking. As I say, the book Partisan is dedicated to Colin, and he writes of him in notebooks and letters. One recently has come to light, was written by, by Grandad to Colin's mother in a request to find out what had happened to him. This letter was published in an Australian newspaper in 1945, and Uncle Mike's just um, has come to our notice through Uncle Mike. So um, I'm going to ask Gary if you could read that letter, please, Gary. Okay, the letter is titled Died with His Chin Held High. Um, it was published in the Daily Mercury in Mackay in Queensland, uh, Saturday, 28th of April 1945. Mackay Gunner fought with guerrillas who refused to betray comrades. Confirmation of the gallant death of Gunner C. E. Cargill after his remarkable escape from the German prison camp to join Yugoslav guerrillas has been received by his relatives in Mackay. Gunner C. E. Cargill, younger brother of Mr. George Cargill of Mackay Post Office staff, enlisted in the first week of the war at Townsville and was in Mackay a week later when his attestation was affirmed. He left Mackay with the first AIF draft from this city in October 1939 and served abroad with the first contingent to fight overseas. He was captured by the Germans in Greece but escaped and no official word of his fate was obtained until Mrs G Cargill heard of the exploits of Colonel Denver of New Zealand who escaped with Gunnar Cargill after, and after serving with the Yugoslavs is now back in New Zealand. Mrs. Cargill wrote to Colonel Denver and received the following reply. Dear Madam, I regret, I regret to inform you that the photo is without doubt my well-remembered comrade, Colin Cargill. Colin and I escaped together from prison camp and eventually found ourselves in the mountains of Yugoslavia. In those days, things were very bad indeed for the British armies and we were faced with the alternative of surrendering to the Germans or continuing the fight with the guerrilla forces then being formed. The winter of 1941 was the worst experienced for many decades, and naturally we were feeling the cold very much. Colin was suffering from frostbite effects from an all-night action in which, we, in which he won the admiration of everyone who witnessed his daring. In the following action, Colin, whose feet and nose were giving him trouble, was ordered to remain at the mountain retreat while we went into action. Before leaving, I gave Colin a piece of paper with my name and army number in case anything happened to me. The next news I had was that the Italians had raided the hills where Colin was and killed or captured the biggest part of the garrison. Knowing that the sentence for a prisoner of war taking up arms was death, Colin refused to give any information regarding my whereabouts and was shot with several others at Burenica Bridge in Slovenia. My information came from soldiers who were in the action. My next proof came from a Slovenian who was stationed in Ljubljana and acted as an interpreter to the Italians. He located me and told me that my comrade, John Denver, had been shot by the Italians. I couldn't understand this until I remembered giving Colin my name and address. I then realized the sad truth. My people were informed by the Italians and Germans that I had been shot, but instead it was my friend. To 
say that I missed my friend is not enough, as only soldiers who went through what Colin and I went through can know what it means to lose a friend, an undying comrade. When I left Europe, Uranitsa was still in the enemy's hands, but I left instructions that immediately it was possible word was to be sent to me as to where Colin was buried. I would have liked to pay my last respects to the soldier who made the supreme sacrifice, and in doing so, refused to betray his friends in any way. I myself feel that the Australian government should be made to recognise the exploits of this soldier who refused to surrender in spite of German prison camp and frostbite and surrounded on all sides by the then victorious Huns who carried on the fight for liberation. I wish I could have held out some hope for you, but in view of all I know, thought it better you should know the truth. I'm returning your photo herein, and if ever any word reaches me of Colin's resting place, I'll let you know at once. A, a very special letter and it speaks to the character and kindness um, of Granddad that may not have always been um, obvious from them coming back from war. Oh, yes. Granddad has also acknowledged in the material that I've read the suffering caused to his family um, from his um, quite extended um, stay overseas and the fact that he was reported dead and was, um, Nana was drawing a widow's pension for over a year. It's not often that you see cancelled death certificates. Um, he was absent from them for four years and 158 days, and you know that's, that's a significant chunk of time. I'd like to finish with a few words from a notebook from Grandad's that I believe um, is a message that's still relevant in the world that we live in today. And he writes, I only wish that people who have small grievances against something or someone would come out honest and open and settle them instead of kicking this precious thing called freedom around like a football.